Hi, I'm Krista Jacobson, headmistress of the Budodukai, where we teach authentic ninjutsu and classical samurai bujutsu. And for those of you who don't know what that is, it's the ancient martial arts of the ninja and samurai. In today's video, we're going to be looking at an early 1900s text on ninjutsu. This particular text originally was written in 1916. Now, what many people don't know is that there was actually three ninja booms. Everyone knows of the ninja boom in Japan in the 1960s, and then again, we have another one in the 1980s here in America. However, in the early 1900s, 1910s, there was a huge interest for the ninja, and there was lots of text written at that time. Now, what we're going to do today is we're looking at a particular text called Ninjutsu. It was written in 1916 by Kensai Byokin. Now, this particular text here was translated by Sunyoshi Matsuno. So this is the text that we're going to be looking at today. Again, early 1900s, written in Japan, 1916 by Kensai Byokin. So as we go through this text today, I want you guys to ask yourself a few questions. I want you to ask yourself, is this the type of text that influenced the image of the ninja going into the 1960s ninja boom in Japan, and then again, the image slightly changed into the image that we see in the 1980s boom in America? Do you think this is the type of text that started changing the image of the ninja, right? Or do you think this type of text in the early 1900s still had its roots in historical accuracy? What I'm going to do is present some of the information, and as I go through this, I want you guys to ask those questions to yourself. And then at the end, I want you guys to comment below and let me know what you think. Do you think that this material has a lot more historical accuracies in it than not? Let me know your thoughts. Now, before I begin, I always give a shout out to all of my new viewers. So if this is the first video that you guys have seen of me, my name is Krista Jacobson. I'm the headmistress of the Buddha Dukai, which means School of the Warrior Way. We teach Koryu Ninjutsu and Koryu Bujutsu, so the ancient martial arts of the ninja and samurai. This organization does have other areas of focus, such as reality-based self-defense, weapons training and tactics, concealed carry, survival skills, martial arts theory, thought, and philosophy, martial arts conditioning. If any of these topics interest you at all, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and don't forget to click the bell. I do post two to three videos every single week. So if you're interested in any of these topics, please subscribe, click the bell, and keep up with what we're doing. Okay, so here's the work right here. Again, it's called Ninjutsu, originally written in 1916 by Kensai Byokin, and it is translated by Sunyoshi uh, Masuno. Now, um, a few things I want to say before we get going on this particular book and share some of the information that I've tabbed on the side for you guys. I want to say in the preface, it really states something that I think is interesting. And in the preface it says, to our greatest surprise, 10,000 copies have been sold in three months of publication. So. It definitely implies that this was a very, very popular uh, publication in the early 1900s, again written in 1916. That also means that this predates many of the works done by Ito Gengetsu. And some of you guys are, um, I'm sure, fans of Ito Gengetsu's work, uh, or at least know who he is here in the ninja community. Now, another thing that it says in the in the uh, preface of the book and the introduction, it says, as a self-defense art that long existed, though once neglected, recently has come into fashion and is talked about in films and picture books. That is something that I find very interesting as well in the introduction to this book. So basically it's saying that in the early 1910s, ninjutsu has become back into fashion and it's talked about in films and picture books. So this implies that there was three ninja booms, one in the early 1900s, from the late 1800s to the early 1900s, another one in the 1960s, like an example, the movie series of Shinobi no Mono, and then again in the 1980s in America, where it really took off into all the different films and, and comic books and cartoons and all that we've seen from there. So let's take a look at this particular book and let's see what's on the inside. The address here, and I just want to say, like to our greatest surprise, 10,000 copies have been sold out in just three months of publication. And then it goes on. So this was extremely popular for the time. Okay, down here on the preface, it says, Ninjutsu, a self-defense art had long existed, though once neglected, recently has come into fashion and being talked about. So again, originally written in 1960, and now it is recent for the time, 1916, it's becoming into fashion and talked about. Ninjutsu, different from those appearing in the film or on the cover of picture books. So the author of this book, Kensai Byokin, in 1916, right? He is saying that in this time, it's becoming in fashion, but ninjutsu is not what we see in film or picture books, right? And again, Putting this as a time in a timetable here, we're looking at the early 1900s and 1916. 
Now here, I want to share with you guys that this one, the translation had an addition to it. And here it says, Koga Samurai, a summary, a book, a booklet published by Koga Samurai Society, the spirit of the Koga Samurai. So in the original 1916 text, this was not added. But then when it was translated by uh, Sunyoshi Matsuno, he added Koga Samurai, which is a popular booklet of the time, into this particular translation. Right here it says, what is ninjutsu? Right, right here. And it says, ninjutsu literally means the art of mystification. It has uh, been applied to various uses as mystery of martial arts belonging to samurai since olden times, getting out of difficulties or making frequent appearances or disappearances from the ranks of the enemy. What I think is an interesting here is that Kensai Byoken is saying that it has been applied to various uses as mysteries of martial arts belonging to samurai. So he, in 1916, there definitely is not a separation between ninja and samurai. 1916, Kensai Byokin is clearly saying ninjutsu is a martial art belonging to samurai. Now when we get over here it says, though ninjutsu and Berkeley look alike at a glance, there are miles of differences between them and the fundamental meaning. And it really goes into why um, people who train as a thief or a burglar, that's not the same thing as ninjutsu. And in, in this particular um, publication he makes that very clear. Now right here, he says, academically studying ninjutsu has become important nowadays. During the period of civil war, 15th to 16th century, lots of expert ninjas appeared, but their mysteries were kept secret. They were handed down by word of mouth from a master to discipline, just like other martial arts as kenjutsu, which is swordsmanship, sojutsu, spearmanship, or kyujutsu, archery. There's nothing written left from that time period and, or academic documents. Accordingly, they are in great danger of being neglected or forgotten today. So, what he's saying here is ninja, or shinobi no mono, which he gets into that as well, he talks about that they were really prevalent at a certain time and everything was kept secret and it was always handed down by word of mouth. Not much was written down on the particular topic and he compared it to lots of other arts such as kenjutsu, sojutsu, and kyujutsu. And anyone who studies koryu knows that even the majority of scrolls written in kenjutsu, jujutsu, taijutsu, all, all of the koryu arts, the vast majority of those scrolls as well were written in the Edo period. You don't see the vast majority of those scrolls from the Sengoku Jidai. So I think that is also something that um, uh, it's kind of interesting. Kensai Byokin writes, The range of ninjutsu application is very wide, as I have described before, mainly for the purpose of spying upon or assassination. The enemy ninjutsu was used by samurai in olden times, stealing into the enemy's ranks or fighting by the techniques of ninjutsu. So I want to kind of... Let's break down that just a little bit more, okay? So he's saying, The range of ninjutsu's application is very wide, as I have described before mainly for the purpose of spying or assassination, the enemy. Ninjutsu was used by samurai in olden times for stealing in to the enemy's ranks or fighting by the techniques of ninjutsu. So that is another important part. Again, he's not separating ninjutsu, ninja from samurai and bujutsu. He's clearly saying ninjutsu was used by the samurai for spying and assassination. Here they're talking about different schools of ninjutsu, and it says the most significant um, ninjutsu schools are Iga, Koka, Akutagawa. In Iga school, they mainly used mice. Koga school used cats. The creative schools are Nagaru, Hagaru, Takeda, Akibe, and so on. So he listed some of the um, uh, various different types of um, uh, ninja ryuha. But what I thought is um, interesting, he says in the Iga, they mainly used mice. In the Koka, they used cats. Ninjutsu is transmitted in secret, and it says, Ninjutsu, different from other martial arts such as Kenjutsu, Jujutsu, Sojutsu, Archery, etc., left nothing written systematically on its methods or mysteries. Accordingly, it was regarded as a very top secret, and its way of um, initiation was different from others. Ninja seldom taught many at a time. Neither did he confer full mastership easily. Most of the mysteries were transmitted from father to son, from master to proficient discipline, confining it to themselves. Besides, they were taught orally, not by written text. 
So, we can say that there is no book written on ninjutsu. Today, there remains only one book on ninjutsu, Seiryuken's traditional book which clarifies that ninjutsu was surely a top secret of mysteries. So he's talking about Seiryuken's traditional book. When he's talking about Seiryuken, okay, it's very clear who he is talking about. I'm going to read this right here because I'm not the expert Seiryuken. So here he says, um, an expert Seiryuken Notori of Kishu Han, present Wakayama Prefecture. Han means feudal clan. Generally speaking, it derives its origin from being unknown. So it goes on to say that their regular tools were a, um, a waddled hat, a rope with a hook, slate pencil, medicine, one meter towel, and a flint and steel. So it's, it's something that you can um, make a fire with. Now, any of you guys in the ninja community know that he is talking about the Shoninki. And I'm gonna just go on and just say right now that this book in 1916, written by uh, uh, Kinsai Byokin, is just loaded with information from the Shoninki. There are other influences in it as well, um, Chinese text, etc. But it does have a lot of um, the Shoninki influence in this book as you read it. Down here, he's talking about the Gogyo, which is a Chinese text. Now, this is also found in more common um, ninjutsu training today. But it says, according to top secret mysteries of ninjutsu, there are five ways of escaping from the enemy's attack by means of trees, fire, earth, metal, and water. So, Gogyo. So, trees being Mokutan, fire, katan, earth, dotan, metal, kintan, and water, suitan. And then it goes on to list some of the other tanjutsus like Mokutan, katan, dotan, kintan, suitan, jintan, kintan, jutan, etc. Right? So, that's clearly from Chinese, as a very Chinese element to it. Now, over here, and then it goes on more with more tan. So gyotan, chutan, hitan, geitan, seitan, utan, mutan, raitan, dentan, and futan, and etc. etc. Invisibility, self-defense, etc. Truth and falsehood goes into kyojutsu. Here we see obviously the kuji, which is very popular uh, in the ninja community. We're going on. Make up, travel, how to travel, practice of ninjutsu, methods of jumping, horses and cows, uh, detective work, um, how to spy. Here's some of the magical spells or the charms that the ninja would have used uh, using snakes and frogs, spell for making good and bad relationships. I am going to be making a specific video on the Yamato, but before I do that, again, I want to make reference to this video before I make that video. So here it says, the ninjutsu sword, shorter than normal one, as long as two feet, its cord is very long. For it is used for climbing up walls. Stand on the sword against the wall and use it as a handguard or as a scaffold and go up on top of the wall. Bring the sword up by pulling the cord towards itself. Its handguard, Suba, is larger and rougher in surface. It is said that the ninja never used a fine sword with a name of the swordsmith. When assassinating an enemy, the ninja usually used the newly made thick sword to thrust. So it was more of a thrusting or a spear. He never pulled it out after thrusting and killing the enemy, leaving there, uh, leaving it there so that he might not revive. He did not want to be traced back to the name of a swordsmith. So basically, in 1916, they're saying that they used hammered out straight... No, they're not saying straight swords. I want to make sure we're clear here. He didn't say anything about a straight sword. He just said short swords. I want to be clear here. It said that the ninja never used a fine sword with the name of a swordsmith. So it's not saying that they use straight swords, it's saying that they didn't use a sword that was made by an actual swordsmith, a blacksmith. This implies that it's just some hammered out piece of steel that they're using on the mission because they're just using it as a tool and they would leave it there. Now that does open the door for other, you know, uh, research and um, conversation, but just thought that was an interesting point. Now over here, we're talking about reading faces and things like that. So you see, you know, mole reading and the different moles on people's faces and they, they point them with a name, wrinkle reading, all the different wrinkles that could happen on a face. And then as you turn it, it goes through what all of them mean and, and how they would use that to kind of get information from the individual that they're talking to. Uh, just interesting 
points of what they believed at the time. Now here we're talking about the Koga Samurai Summary from the booklet published from Koga Samurai Society. This is what I mean by this was added to the original text. And it says Koga Samurai is a general term for a group of warriors who lived in Koka uh, in Goshu, present day uh, Shiga Prefecture. Since the Heian period, which is the 8th to 12th century, which coincides with the rise of the warrior class in the middle of the Heian period, after the collapse of the manorial system owning by bad policy of the government, it was such later the age of the civil wars, 15th to 16th century, that the exercise their power and became the famous Koga Samurai. Their other names were Koga Sho Samurai, Koga Shoshi, Koga Shu, Koga Hai, Koga Ono, Koga Shinobi no Hei, Koga Koshi, and so on. So, uh, Koshi is another word that you see come up a lot in some of the older ninja texts. Now, um, it says that the Koga Samurai never served a lord and was given a stipend like Samurai in the later ages. And then it kind of goes on, which I'm just not going to rattle on all that. But I just think that was an interesting point. More famous picture from this particular text. I'm sure a lot of people have seen this particular image um, from this particular text in the ninja community. But again, uh, this text is Ninjatsu, written by Kensei Byokin uh, in 1916, translated by Sunyoshi Matsuno. So there you guys go, an early 1900s text on ninjutsu from Japan. What do you guys think? Do you think that this text holds more historical accuracies to it than historical inaccuracies? Let me know your thoughts. Stick it in the comment section below. If you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I do post two to three videos every single week. If you guys are interested in training in authentic ninjutsu and classical samurai bujutsu, please check out my website at budodoyuninjutsu.com. There you guys can see the seven traditions and the list of strategies, principles, and philosophies that we teach. If you don't live next to one of our schools, you guys can always join the Budodoyukai online ninjutsu dojo and start training that way. So thank you guys very much for your love and support. I deeply appreciate it. Until next time, take care, be safe and good luck in your journey of Buddha. Bye.